Okay. So, we're starting today. Uh, we're going to be focused on uh, setting up the environment. Um, figuring out what text editor you might want to use. Uh, setting up our folder structure and running over the website that we're going to be uh, pushing towards for our end build. Um, so let's start at looking at the website that I've chosen for us to uh, work towards. Now it's going to look a bit, uh, a bit out of your league right now, but I can guarantee you uh, it's not. So this is the website. Um, the images will probably replace with something else, but the general idea stands. Uh, we have a top navigation bar uh, with home, about us, services, projects, clients, blog, contact us. Uh, some sliding images with buttons um, that we can choose the uh, image and text for, uh, as well as services portfolio, services portfolio. This is a template, kind of. Uh, we scroll down. We see some cards with some more images uh, people with the same name and title and, and text but we'll change that out to what we want it to be uh, but three cards with buttons that you can hover over and you see the text color changes um, with multiple images and people uh, so I'm gonna scroll down and we see another the service tab uh, we have six boxes all with uh, icons we're gonna have six icons unique ones um, once we start using images and icons, uh, I need to turn down my music. Um, once we start using images and icons, we will either, you can either choose your own or uh, I will have a Google Drive link that will be public with uh, all of the images that I use. So you can see an interesting effect here with as you scroll, I'm sure you've seen this before. This is really choppy, so we're not going to do it as choppy. But um, as you scroll, you can see that the image changes uh, with your scroll. Uh, we have total projects, happy clients, active members, and awards one. Um, and so we're going to be making that as well. Uh, and our projects, so you can see it kind of auto scrolls over. Um, we might just do buttons just because. Uh, this also this is using a JavaScript library maybe we'll use it this will probably be the last functionality that we get working um, but the output stays the same I mean we have we have multiple boxes with different images a text and a button along with it uh, we have another kind of divider area uh, you know just with information and a button um, we have a section for testimonials uh, again the same slider functionality but we'll probably leave that to the very last bit um, so yeah and then we have I hate these bars but it's probably good to understand how to do, how to make them um, so we have you know a section of what they value themselves at uh, with an image and a button for a quote and their latest news uh, no slider just cards with image title date comments likes text and read more and there's three of them and a footer um, we're not going to do this detailed of a footer though there's no reason to uh, no one's ever going to care all that much about their popular tags and dig and forest google plus okay so this is the website and you can click these and you can see that it drags it down and up we're going to keep it consistent we're not going to have it jump between about us back up to services back down to projects uh, we're going to keep it consistent and each one is going to order down uh, so now that we've broken down our website that we're going to push towards our end game uh, let's look at the tools that we need to actually um, make this website so we need a code editor so uh, what code editors are there out there that we can use so 
we have uh, Visual Studio Code, by far the most popular uh, today. Uh, Visual Studio Code is a incredibly versatile uh, system that allows for any type of uh, code. You can see there's Python, there's C++, uh, C Sharp. Um, we're going to be using it for uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so VS Code, very powerful, runs multiple languages, uh, has things like extensions that allow you to uh, enable your development process. Uh, more easily and uh, get more use out of your in, uh, coding environment. Um, you can see the setup, the user interface, uh, keyboard shortcuts, reference, and download button. Um, so if you want to start with VS Code, this is what I use. Uh, you just go to code.visualstudio.com, uh, download it. It'll take you to the link that I was just on. Uh, you just download it. I already have one installed. Just install it normally um, and you would go from there. So the reason I start with VS Code is because it's what I'm going to be using. And I'm also going to be showing you my extensions uh, to help me load and run uh, my dev environment. Uh, now, I can show you for Atom and Sublime Text, uh, not so much Notepad, but it would take too much time. And I feel like if you um, already know how to use VS Code, setting up Atom and Sublime Text is like, it's a breeze. Uh, but just a quick rundown of what these ones are. Uh, Atom, I've used it I've used it before. Uh, it's it's really great for collaborative editing. Um, and it's, again, it's really easy to manage the color that they use. It's disgusting. But um, it's really easy to manage. And I actually like the client a lot more than, um, than VS Code, strictly from development standpoint. You get a lot more information. Uh, with Teletype, you can work together with people, uh, and it's also made by the people who uh, made Git, uh, and Git and GitHub are owned by Microsoft, so uh, Microsoft has two code editors under their belt, you can see by the cat here. Um, so we have Atom, uh, which is another code editor, uh, file system browser, cross-platform editing, package manager, similar to the extensions. Um, multiple panels, which you can do in VS Code as well. Uh, it's a desktop app built with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and Node, so it's all the tools that we would use. Um, you can use this if you want. Again, I will be using Visual Studio Code, though, but if you want to, you would download it and set it up your way. Uh, and so next we have Sublime Text. You know, Sublime Text is what I, with what I started with. Um, it's in terms of code editors, incre it's as sophisticated, it's, I don't think it is at all. I think it's incredibly basic, which has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, it's first is that you could pretty well see it's no nonsense. Like the, with VS Code, um, I have my file structure, but I can, I can do things like multiple uh, tabs open at one time if I want to do, I could do three at a time, I could do I can't put one down here now. Oh, I can. I could do, you know, however many I want at a time. Uh, but we're never going to do that. Um, with Sublime Text, it's just in tabs, like you would a normal Chrome browser, such as mine. Um, you can see the man editing. Like, it, it, this text doesn't matter. The order of it, though, it's pretty easy to read. Um, from top to bottom. Uh, you have your folders. Uh, you can go to anything with a few, a few keystrokes. I mean, we can do that with Control F. Um, multiple sections, split editing. Uh, so you can do side by side now. Uh, when I started, you couldn't do side by side. Cross platform, of course. Uh, so Sublime is, it's pretty no nonsense, uh, but it does also, like, it's, op it's not open source, but it also, like, you can download it for free, but it's, it's like, you also can, like, pay for a full package, which I don't like at all. I think that coders should apply standards to more coders, and that developers should give uh, all of the options that they would want to other developers, um, rather than locking them behind a paywall to make these, uh, to make the content that they want to make. 
But if you're interested in Sublime Text, you would just download whatever operating system uh, you're set up on. Uh, you can read the change log, but you would set it up normally again. Uh, and then we have Notepad++. Plus plus. Um, this is the very last option that I uh, don't think you should ever choose. Uh, it is really dated. Um, so it's, it's in version 7.8.5, which was updated recently, as in uh, a month ago. But in terms of power and in terms of uh, editing capability, it's not really used for, it's not used for web applications. You can see it's written in C++. Um, you can use uh, web applications, but it's really designed around uh, high performance coding for uh, PC, like program editing, software applications, um, mobile apps, kind of uh, business management stuff. So we won't be using Notepad++. And you can honestly use a uh, just generic notepad for this stuff. Um, when you write code, it's written in a plain and rich text format. So um, with plain text, um, it's le legitimately, it's just like, like you know, how you would normally type out uh, some text on a notepad. And you would just end up saving this out as an HTML file. And now if I go to my desktop and I actually do uh, this instead, just as an example to show you that you can use, uh, you can use a notepad just normally and you can see what I've written in it. This is some text in a div. So we're not gonna use notepad. That's, that's not how I work. Uh, we're gonna be using Visual Studio Code. So again, just another really quick rundown. Um, Visual Studio Code, the, the platform that I use, uh, incredibly powerful, multiple languages supported, uh, especially the ones that we will be working with um, for the next little while uh, with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, top extensions, uh, top developers around the world use it. Um, IntelliSense is uh, just kind of whatever. but. The environment uh, is what I really enjoy, and I've uh, had a phenomenal time using it. And so that's what I'm going to be using for this development. So if you want to download it, download for Windows. Uh, you get your download. You just install it as normal, set it up, and then pull up your first tab of Visual Studio Code. So uh, we won't worry about the nightly build, portable mode. Uh, but we will learn about extensions once we get into Visual Studio. So, um, yeah, just download this. And while you're doing that, I will, uh, you can either pause and set it up or pause and figure out what other text editor you want or just continue to listen to me talk about the other text editors again really quickly. So, uh, we have Atom again, developed by Git uh, and GitHub. So, the, who are owned by Microsoft. So again, that, you know, Microsoft has Visual Studio Code and Atom, uh, a great editor. Uh, I love the environment a lot. I think that it's my favorite environment. Kind of no nonsense, but at the same time, like the amount of information that you get from these panels is crazy. And also that it's automatically linked to GitHub. Um, so for us today, uh, we'll set up our folder structure we'll start applying github probably in the next session um, because github is a whole thing of its own to learn um, i want to start by setting up the environment totally and preparing you for uh, development uh, as soon as possible because the best way you can learn from this kind of stuff is uh, actually doing it yourself um, so with Atom, you have cross-platform editing, built-in package manager, uh, multiple panes, file system browser, themes. Um, it's made with HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and Node. So again, all the tools that we're going to be using ourselves. Um, but I just don't feel like it's as powerful as I want it to be in terms of editing. And I don't feel like I can 
navigate it very well. There's a lot of information going on, which again, I think is my favorite thing. But at the same time, it does become a bit difficult to figure out where you were or um, what's next or how to refine something really quickly. Um, but if you're interested in this, download and set it up yourself. And then again, we have Sublime Text. So very no nonsense, very simple. You have your tabs like Chrome, you have your folder structure. Uh, you can see there's no implementation of things like, like a terminal or GitHub or anything. It is just a raw code editor. Um, I started with this and I think that it was a good stepping stone, but I don't think that, I think that starting with VS Code and starting with the complicated thing first uh, in terms of your development environment I think is probably a lot better to get used to right away. Um, because while there's just these simple tabs and it's really easy, like again, the content doesn't matter, but the, the understanding is that you can read this from top to bottom and understand line 35 line to line 67. All this is in one tab uh, and you don't have to have worry about maybe accidentally moving stuff from one file to another. If you have multiple tabs open, uh, or accidentally pressing the wrong button, keystrokes, so that something might happen, you're not understanding what's going on. Uh, no nonsense, but it's not as powerful as VS Code. You do have extensions, they're not phenomenal though. Um, and then again, Notepad++, it's for C++ primarily, and you can use normal Notepad. So I'm assuming now that you have chosen your code editor and uh, you've downloaded it, and it's ready to launch for the first time. So uh, let's, let me close my folder. So when you load up Visual Studio Code for the first time, uh, you'll get a welcome screen. Uh, you'll also possibly get some setup. It's been about a year and some, so I don't remember the actual uh, setup. We'll run through the setup. Uh, and then once you start seeing a welcome screen, we'll get started from here. Okay. So once your I have 10 errors, I have a ton of drop frames. I've dropped 14,000 frames. Okay. Um, so we load up Visual Studio Code and we get our welcome screen. So you can obviously that my reasons are filled in because I've been working on lots of stuff lately. Um, we have a help section, a start section, our customization and learn. Uh, file edit selection view, go run terminal help, and these five buttons on the side. Let's start with explore. So your explorer is uh, what will be your uh, folder structure. So when you, when you make a folder or when you select a folder, anything in that folder shows up here. Um, so you can see the folder name, in this case, say ATM, I have my CSS file, a bunch of images, a JavaScript, and uh, an index.html file. Um, so you can see that this is everything inside of my folder. Uh, I also have more options. I can make a new file, a new folder, refresh explorer, or collapse all the folders. So if I have everything open, I think this is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and I just collapse all folders. Um, my welcome tab is also still up too. So that's uh, our file manager shows everything in our folder. So next is the search function. So search uh, can search anything in VS Code. Uh, we can look for extensions, but it also, it, it primary functionally is uh, for searching inside of your folder. So again, if I have a folder pulled up, let me just pick one that has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, this one has a ton of stuff in it. So I'm looking for, say I'm looking for um, my uh, Excel spreadsheets files and I'm, an, I'm new to this project. Uh, I've just been picked up and I'm to edit or I'm to pull up our Excel and delete it. So I just look for the extension. Oh, you can't do extensions really. I thought you could. Maybe you can't, okay. Or maybe it's because they're Python files. No, they're XLSX. Okay, let's say uh, 
I need to look at what uh, fonts we have. Uh, you can do it to the CSS. Um, but, oh, it seems to actually not search through specific files. Okay, it searches through, this is the first time that I'm seeing this. Uh, it searches through any lines of code that you've written. So maybe you need to edit uh, a font weight or something. So I have 17 instances within five files, uh, all my CSS files. Uh, and I want to edit the font weight of this. I would search for my font weight and change it like that. Uh, so search searches within your, in your files for lines of code. Um, and in this case, I searched for font weight bold or font weight. And so that's what popped up. Okay. We're not going to worry about source control. Um, but we are going to worry about, we're not going to worry about run editor. We are going to worry about extensions though. So let me close my folder here. So extensions are incredibly important to uh, your development environment. They help you uh, with editing quicker, uh, getting information much smoother and much more faster and much more efficiently. Uh, and it allows you to do monotonous things that you're that you're too good for now. Um, maybe you need to make a really quick change and you're working in your HTML and you think, oh, that design doesn't look very great. Um, instead of having to look through all of your CSS, which could be thousands of lines, um, you would instead just using the CSS peak package, click on your class or your ID, which will run over what they are eventually. And it'll pop up with information, um, and you can change that information inside of the inside of a completely different file. Um, so that's the power of one of the extensions. Uh, we have things like color changes, uh, making it easier to match brackets um, and manage what's inside of what. Um, so, for example, if I pull up a, let's pull up this one again. So if I pull up my JavaScript file, uh, let's see, this is not, this one's not a good example. Okay, so right here. So you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 17 different types of bracket well of 16 they're all there's four different types of brackets but there's 16 that open um if these were all the same color these were white and i couldn't select it and see which one's open or i couldn't select and see which one's closed it would be much much more difficult to manage uh, especially quickly whereas with being able to uh color code it and being able to use the bracket pair colorizer uh, I can quickly and easily see I have a yellow opening bracket okay so it must close with a yellow closing bracket I have a yellow opening curly bracket the closing curly bracket so now I can tell that there is stuff I can now see uh, if I want to change um, one of these or if I if maybe I had something in between here and here, I know that changing, I can I can easily tell what I need to uh, change and where it's going to make change like change its effect. So uh, it's just it's really easy to tell uh, what you're working with and what's inside of other things. Whereas if these were white brackets, I could pretty easily get lost and uh, not know that the thing that I'm changing is actually the thing that I want to change. Um, so these are the extent of uh, extensions. Uh, we have small things like HTML preview. Um, we're not going to use this, but as an example of uh, how it works, if I just pull up. OK, that's not what I want. I thought a control KV maybe. No. Uh, maybe just give me a sec here. 
Control Shift V. Okay. So what's supposed to happen is a a preview of my HTML is supposed to pop up, but for some reason that's just not wanting to work right now. Uh, we're not going to use it anyways. But what about small things like this Markdown preview? Now Markdown preview, it's uh, this little thing in the, right here. Uh, so you can see it in my file as well. In this top right, you can see uh, this whole folder structure or the file. So the reason we have this is that we want to scrub through something really quickly. So if we have a file that's huge, it's it's you know however long it is, 748 lines of code. Well, we can more quickly scrub through it like this rather than uh, using the line here. It's around the same pace, but the idea is that um, like you can tell where you are on the page using the markdown preview as well. Um, very small things that do enhance how you use Visual Studio Code. Um, as well as something like Live Server. Now, Live Server is a massive one um, where if I now go to my index and I go live, it will host on a live server. So now I have my page open. So this is my page. This is my index.html. So let's say uh, the company has changed their name. They're no longer Thames River Anglers Association. They're just Thames River Anglers. So if I remove associate, uh, what did I remove? I changed, I removed the wrong one. If I remove, oh no, I didn't. Um, this has class hidden on it. So maybe it's just, okay. If I remove association and I save, well, it refreshed, but you didn't really see it happen. Uh, I think it's because it's supposed to be this one. So if I remove association, I save, you can now see that with live server, I didn't have to refresh anything. Um, so say I'm making a lot of big changes, uh, or I just want to make changes and want to save it immediately. I'm going to remove dedication today for tomorrow. And at the same time, or and I want to save that. I want to see how it looks immediately. Maybe I have my code editor on a different page or on a different monitor. Sorry. Um, or maybe it's side by side, uh, in the case that here, uh, and I re-add dedication today for tomorrow. Can I see that it's read back in? I think I like that better. So uh, I leave it like this. Oh, these icons are maybe kind of too high. Let's look at our footer and see. Um, okay, let's maybe, maybe the icons need to be pushed down a little bit. Uh, maybe by like 20 pixels. There we go. Completely and uh, utterly much better. And you can see that it changed right away. I didn't have to refresh the page or anything. Um, Live server just automatically refreshes it and updates whatever change that you made. Um, on top of other extensions that you might want to use yourself, Code Runner just it, it helps uh, with code snippets. Um, this comes pre-installed with Visual Studio Code, and the coloring of my text you can see it's all blue. Um, links are and classes anything in a quote is set with orange um, and some things will be like purple or yellow uh, that's due to uh, you can see this is a different orange uh, or more yellow uh, the media is purple um, these brackets are purple this is the bracket colorizer but this text color is with Emmet and Emmet comes pre-installed. It is still an inset extension, but it still it comes pre-installed with Visual Studio Code, um, and it makes it easier to read uh, your code. So, with that being said, that is extensions. Now, these are the ones that I have enabled uh, during this time. I would have uh, I will run through the marketplace extension searching with you. I hope that you. Uh, use these. Uh, I'm fairly certain that live server is uh, automatically set up with VS Code, but I would still recommend that you check. Uh, so if you want to check your extensions that you have on, you would go under extensions, enabled, and check what you have. Uh, if you want to view the recommended ones based on your usage, uh, you would go under the recommended, 
and disabled as well. So uh, you can probably see by this top bar, you can search for your own extensions. Um, for those that didn't see it, how do you look for your extensions? Well, you look through it using search extensions. So uh, CSS Peak is one that doesn't come with uh, Visual Studio Code. So I would Google, or not, I would search in the marketplace for CSS Peak. I can see I have a ton of CSS options. I have View Peak, which allows you to go into the definition of view, modules, file peaking, uh, resource peak, snippets. Uh, it's Chinese version, or I am not sure. What, yeah, I think it's Chinese. Uh, version of view CSS peak, uh, HTML CSS support. Um, we're just looking for CSS peak. Uh, now, if you want to install it, you'd click on the, just the little install button. Uh, if you want to disable it, you can do so, or you can disable it within a specific workspace. So if you have multiple tabs open, multiple tabs of Visual Studio Code, and you're uh, working on something that's um, not so CSS driven, uh, but you have a little bit of CSS, but you don't want to really work with it in this capacity, you would disable it on that tab. So you would go into the tab that you're working on and you would disable the works, uh, disable within workspace. Um, if you want to disable it entirely, you just set disable and you can uninstall. So this is how we would search for extensions. So maybe I'm looking for a pretty generic one. I want some HTML stuff. Um, well, we just search HTML. We kind of just start looking through, uh, what we want. Now you can see this man is typing out a small thing you see body and then it makes a closing tag as well. We don't have to worry about that because Emmett uh, does that for us as well. It currently exists within VS Code extension. So it's baked into when you install Visual Studio Code. It's also baked into Emmet. Um, but we can see our, we maybe want an HTML previewer, uh, which maybe I'll install and test it out. Um, or we want, Maybe we some, want something to do with JavaScript. With code snippets, Babel, uh, Booster, Adam Grammar. So this takes from Adam and uses the uh, the grammar and structure from Adam and puts it into Visual Studio Code. We're not really worried about this, but this is how you would set up your packages. Now again, just to run through what I have, bracket pair colorizer, makes brackets different colors uh, based on how deep into your file structure you are. Uh, code Runner. Uh, this came pre-installed with Visual Studio Code for me, but it runs a snippet for multiple file languages. Uh, so you can watch here in the output. You can run the code and then the console log will pop up with whatever. Um, CSS peak we've run over it. So what it actually does is if you now if I go to my uh, index.html and I uh, Okay, it didn't work Peak If I peek the definition I can now see that anything tied to BurgerCon will pop up here uh, And I can see all of the changes and this is great if maybe you make a change on a different line uh, or Maybe it's a change on uh, multiple different files. Uh, I think that, let's see, let's look at the UL possibly. Oh, is it only just going to do main? Oh no, these are only media queries too. Okay. so. If maybe you're running across multiple files, uh, say you have a main CSS, but you have something in here and then you have a media queries CSS file, um, it'll display all uh, CSS related to that ID or class. Now, again, we'll run through ID and classes when we get to it, but just as a preview, if you already know what ID and classes are. Uh, HTML preview, this one doesn't work for me, so we'll ignore that one. 
live HTML preview. Now we will, I will be trying this out uh, after. We won't worry about this um, right now because we have live server. So with live server, you would uh, open up your, you would go live in the bottom bar and it will pull up a web page for you and you can make your changes and hit changes live. And then markdown preview enhanced is the uh, sidebar here uh, allowing you to see a tiny version of all of your code. So those are extensions. Uh, let me just close my folder and I'll start from the welcome screen again. So we have file, uh, pretty generic stuff, new file, new window, new window pulls up a new VS code window, new file, it just makes a new file, uh, open file, folder, workspace, all of my recent, um, add a file to workspace, we won't worry about this. We also won't worry about saving the workspace. Uh, the preferences tab, so all of your settings, your online service settings for collaboration, your extensions, uh, which can just pull up this list, um, your keyboard shortcuts and key maps. So keyboard shortcuts are embedded uh, are embedded within VS Code. So all of these are my keyboard shortcuts for everything and every function. I have to close Steam. I have completely forgotten. Uh, for every every type of uh, option available in your extensions for whatever you might have linked up. Uh, for Emmet, for Visual Studio Code, every keyboard shortcut is in here. Then key maps are, uh, you can import and use popular key bindings from other services. So the big ones are what I've ran through already. So Notepad++, Atom, Sublime Text. Um, if you've used Sublime Text before, uh, you would know that you would load your extensions or packages using Control, Shift, and P. But with here, there's just a tab for extensions. So maybe you're not used to that. Maybe you want the sublime text mapping. So you would set that up. Uh, user snippets. So um, they run they run commands. So if you think when you type in something in Google, uh, it gets a search result. In this case, uh, or say you have a very specific YouTube video that you want to watch. Uh, you would search that very specific YouTube video. With this, this is basically kind of the same thing where you specifically want to do something. And in this case, uh, maybe it's CSS snippet. So what I would do is I would put in a CSS snippet. You can see the example here, it's defined in the snippet name. Uh, and it would always run this snippet in a CSS file. If I were to like print a console and I type that out in CSS this is what happens we're not going to worry about user snippets I don't use them uh, color theme just dark and light color uh, if you like darker or light themes or high contrast or whatever I'm just going to stick with the default VS Code theme and file icon theme uh, again we're not going to worry about it okay so Let's go ahead and open a new window and go back to the welcome page. So we have edit, pretty generic stuff. Undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, uh, find and replace. Selection, just select all and shrink. Uh, view, we won't really worry about this. We care about the mini map, which is the top right thing. Uh, and breadcrumbs, I can't remember what breadcrumbs are. Uh, and rendering white spaces just it just renders the space between your code um, go we're not gonna worry run we're not gonna worry we're not gonna worry about this kind of debugging uh, terminal so now you can do new terminal here and it just pulls and it pulls up a terminal or you can pull it up from the bottom bar um, just pulling it up a terminal is gonna be really useful for us when we start running um, git and github uh we're not going to worry about it right now so we'll just close it and our help stuff so if anything that i have run through didn't really make sense to you uh or you want to learn more you would just go into the help tab uh, this loads up the welcome page uh, and you can look through the documentation for the for visual studio code uh, and all this good stuff